Today we're looking at the takeaways and headlines coming out of UCLA's Spring Showcase with Chip Kelly in year five for the Bruins on the gridiron. Let's go. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Locked on Pac-12. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin, D1 play-by-play broadcaster. Thanks for making this your first listen or your first view if you're watching on YouTube every day. It's part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with the Conference of Champions every weekday. Like and subscribe wherever you're listening to and or watching the show. Five-star views on Apple Podcasts, comments on the YouTube channel, subscriptions over there. Love to see all of that. Let's get to UCLA. So we're looking at each team's spring game and the biggest takeaways and the headlines and players to watch and storylines that are being generated from it. We're looking at every single team. This is day two. We hit USC yesterday. We've got UCLA today. And the biggest thing coming out of UCLA's spring showcase they didn't have a traditional spring game you know every team does it differently UCLA's was a little bit more of a formal kind of open practice sort of deal so the biggest thing coming out of there was from the offensive side of the ball and that's the two guys that are going to be featured most heavily in the offense and I I think about it like this right now I for the first time am watching a sitcom from the late 90s early 2000s called Frasier and I, I love the show. It's hilarious. I'm sure some of you have seen it. And I'm a huge fan. And one of the things I love about the show is every time I go to watch an episode, I know what I'm going to get. There's a certain rhythm, and a lot of sitcoms have this. There's a certain rhythm, and there's you know styles of jokes, types of jokes that the show makes that I know are going to be there basically every time. And so I always know what to expect. And for me, that's a very comforting thing that I can, you know, put it on and I know exactly the sort of comedy I'm going to get and, you know, how I'm going to feel after after the episode. And so it's very reliable in that sense. UCLA has that in their backfield coming into the 2022 football season with Dorian Thompson Robinson at quarterback and Zach Charbonnet at running back. Now they lose Britton Brown, who was a really nice complimentary back. They'll have to fill that void coming into this season. There are a couple guys who could step into that sort of role. But Chip Kelly said that, you know, nobody's really, I think, claimed that second running back spot yet. But Dorian Thompson Robinson and Zach Charbonnet, that is as reliable of a duo when it comes to offensive production as you are going to find. And when you read people who cover UCLA or watch the spring showcase from this past weekend, it's pretty clear that those two guys are going to be featured very heavily in the offense. And I think that that's a good thing, right? I always go to watch Frazier because I know exactly what I'm going to get from him. I know what I'm going to get from Dorian Thompson Robinson in his fifth year of college football. And I know what I'm going to get from Zach Charbonnet. There's no need to, to sugarcoat it or try to overthink the room or anything of the sorts. You want to rely on those two, both in the running game with, with Zach Charbonnet and then the running and passing game with Dorian Thompson Robinson, who's one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the Pac-12, maybe even in the country, his throwing can definitely leave a little to be desired. But from a mobility standpoint, there aren't a lot of guys as fast as him. He was a wide receiver in high school, if I remember correctly. I think he played a little quarterback, made the transfer late, and Chip Kelly has done a great job bringing him along in this offensive scheme. And when, when you watch him, you can see how comfortable he is. You can see how you know this feels very natural for him at this point, right? Is the the throws that he makes, the confidence that he exudes, the 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 way that he just has a, a command and control of this offense, the way that he didn't when he first started playing. But Chip Kelly w- was hired to get UCLA football back to being competitive, and he didn't worry about the first couple of years. And the DTR was a turnover machine. He trusted the process, invested. He's brought some guys in, and now UCLA is off of an eight win season with a fifth-year starting quarterback coming back. I mean, how many teams can say that they're having a quarterback start for his fifth year with the same team? In the transfer portal era, that's almost unheard of. And I think that's a big advantage for UCLA to have him back there 
as just a reliable signal caller, you know what you're going to get. You'll get explosive plays. He'll make plays with his legs. He's going to know the offense really well. And yes, from time to time, he will commit the occasional turnover. Everybody does. He does it as a higher clip than than some quarterbacks might, but he's not a particularly conservative guy. He'll take downfield shots, and I think that's okay. And he fits very, very well into the offensive scheme that Chip Kelly wants to run. The read option, quarterback runs, all that sort of stuff. So having him back there is kind of one of the biggest storyline because we weren't sure that he was going to come back, right? He could have maybe tried to go to the NFL as, as a skill position player, probably not as a quarterback, I would imagine, but he's certainly athletic enough and, and runs well enough to to carve out a role for himself somehow, some way. But maybe he wanted to go to another school, but he wanted to come back, play for Chip Kelly again. And so did Zach Charbonnet, who transferred over from Michigan last year and was just a workhorse of a running back. He, he was so fantastic and his balance of power and speed and, and shiftiness and his ability to carry the ball 20 to 30 times a game is just huge for a head coach in Chip Kelly, who of course calls the plays, who wants to run the ball. First and foremost, anyone who's watched him in this league from his time back to back at Oregon to now with UCLA, even if you watch, you know, anything he did in the NFL, he wants to run the ball first and foremost. And so with a team that is suddenly dealing with a lot of turnover, I'm going to talk about in, in a moment at the skill positions, having Dorian Thompson Robinson and Zach Charbonnet is the number one headline because they both look really good. They both look like they'll be as good as they were last year, probably even better, right? You add another year in the system, you guys tend to improve, especially with uh, an offensive coach like Chip Kelly. I think those two guys can only get better, although Charbonnet set the bar pretty high. I think DTR is always, you know, even in his good years and good games, has had room to improve. But Zach Charbonnet last year, he was really, really good. One of one of the best running backs in, in the Pac-12. I think you have to put Tavion Thomas in, in that discussion. Um, Travis Dye might be up there. I, I think there were a number of good backs last year in the conference, but... Zach Charbonnet was was arguably one of the best. He's capable of catching passes as well. He just he, he does a lot of things. But they're they're losing a lot of production from last year's offense that scored a lot of points and was the primary reason because the defense struggled once again, as they often have under Chip Kelly. They struggled to get a lot of stops, and the offense is losing three offensive line starters. Chase Cota went to Oregon, Greg Dulcich went to the NFL, and Kyle Phillips went to the NFL. So that's your two leading receivers. And so the, the, the fact that you have DTR and, and Charbonnet back there, and there are guys who, you know, are, are in line perhaps to replace that production that they lost from a season ago. The fact that you have two reliable and insanely productive players at, at your quarterback and running back position on offense is huge for UCLA. And, you know, that that's where the offense is, is going to start. And, you know, I won't say stop there, but, that's where the offense will begin is DTR's arm and the legs of Zach Charbonnet. That is, and Chip Kelly knows that, and they'll be able to score plenty of points with those two guys and, you know, whatever skill position players they, they can put around them. Who are those sorts of players? I'll tell you after I tell you about athletic greens. What is this stuff? One scoop of delicious AG1. You're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day Right. Invest in your gut health to give you more energy, better immune system, and everything without all the pills and vitamins. It's lifestyle friendly, costs you less than $3 a day. With over 7,000 five star reviews, it's recommended by professional athletes. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. That is athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. With DTR and Zach Charbonnet there, you know what you're going to get from them. But the other guys are going to have to step up because Greg Dulcich, Kyle Phillips, those are your two leading receivers. Chase Cota was a nice complimentary piece who never really realized his full potential, I think, at UCLA. But that's because he was behind Dulcich and Phillips in the pecking order of wide receivers that DTR was comfortable throwing the ball to because both are NFL caliber players. I think Phillips, Phillips probably a, a later round draft pick or undrafted free agent, but he certainly got the speed in the hands to succeed at the next level. Greg Dulcich, probably third or fourth round tight end. He's just as good a pass catcher as you're going to get at that position. But 
Let's get to our next segment here as we continue our spring game coverage on Locked On Pac-12. Three players who are, who earn playing time based on the spring showcase and just kind of spring football writ large since this was, you know, probably closer to a glorified practice than an actual competitive game for the Bruins and Chip Kelly. But the first guy who, who Chip has talked about is Duke wide receiver transfer Jake Bobo. Now, Coach Kelly has said that he's pushing himself towards wide receiver one, a position that is, I think, wide open, right? Chase Cota might have been a lead candidate for that had he stayed, but he decided not to. He's up in Eugene with the Ducks. Kyle Phillips is not there. Kyle Phillips was definitely wide receiver one a season ago. You, you could have made an argument that it was Greg Dulcich at, at the tight end position. That was certainly DTR's safety blanket, those two guys, but Dulcich especially. That, that's where he was often looking on third down was either number 85 or number two. Pretty sure Dulcich was number 85. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But Jake Bobo has played four years of college football for a, a good offensive mind at Duke and David Cutcliffe. He is six foot five and he has got a big physical frame. If you go look at him, and watch some of the tape that, that he put on at the spring showcase. He's not afraid to hit people. <laughs> I mean, he is willing to get out there and and go toe to toe with anybody who's in front of him. And he's not afraid to block. And that's something that Chip Kelly wants because he's going to run a lot of those outside zone schemes. So you have to have quality blocking on the perimeter if you're going to spring Zach Charbonnet and these other backs free for for big time explosive runs. That's always been a hallmark of, of a Chip Kelly offense. Are big runs that 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 go to the outside that's how everything begins with that outside zone you have to have wide receivers to block so i think he likes that but it, he's got good hands he's experienced and i i think there's just a giant void there's just a giant void i mean if i told you you know give me the the top option for dtr to have thrown the ball to last season after kyle phillips and greg dulcich if you're not factoring in the running backs it was probably uh, maybe Chase Cota or or Kaz Allen, right? And Kazmir Allen is there, and he he's someone who's going to have to step up in a significant way. But I, I think that Kaz Allen is a little bit more of a slot guy, and when you say wide receiver one, you think someone who's got a big frame like Jake Bobo, who is able to play on the outside. And if he's going to step into that role, the quicker he and DTR can build chemistry, the better it's going to be for the Bruins' offense. So, a lot of pass catchers ha have left the program, and so as a result, guys have got to step in, and, and Jake Bobo has definitely become a leading candidate to do that for, for Chip Kelly and, and UCLA. Another guy, well, it's two guys, but they're twins, so you know we'll just consider it the same. Um, Gabriel and Grayson Murphy transferred to UCLA in this past offseason from North Texas, and they, they've showed some nice things, right? They're you know, not uh, tearing it up in a way that's like, oh my gosh, are these the next big stars of college football? No, but ha have they stood out? Have, have people asked about them and the coaches said good things about them? Yes. And, and the reason that I mentioned them here is they have the potential to, you know, really fill something that's a major void. With Mitchell Agude leaving, he went down to Miami in the transfer portal this offseason. That was UCLA's best pass rusher from a season ago. And there are questions about this Bruins defense on the back end, to, to be sure, which I'll get to here in just a moment, but DBs can only cover for so long, right? You have to have quality pass rushers if you're going to be a good defense, or at least a competent defense. And I was talking about this yesterday with USC. I think UCLA is in a similar boat. They have offensive weapons. Yes, they lost a lot from, from last year, but they still have uh, some good pieces and a great core with DTR and Zach Charbonnet back there. They're going to be able to score points. Chip Kelly, basically the entire time, you know, aside from maybe his first year where, where DTR was a freshman and still learning just how to play the quarterback position at all, he has been able to score plenty of points. The issue is like USC the last couple of seasons, they have struggled stopping people and they hired a new defensive coordinator, which I think was a really good move. But every DC would tell you, your DBs are only as good as your defensive ends allow them to be because it changes your mindset in how you can play receivers and how you can cover when you know confidently that you won't have to be out there matched up with a guy for, you know, five or six seconds. Like that's just a ridiculously long time. If a quarterback, and I know that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but think about a football play quarterback in the shotgun grabs a snap, drops back to pass in a three-step drop. Think about how long five seconds is one, two, three, 
four, five. Yeah, you would be sitting there saying, if you're rooting for the defense, wow, no pressure. He's got all day to throw, right? Like, that's a really long time. So the DBs can be helped out if defensive ends are able to get pressure in particular. Defensive tackles are part of that as well. But Gabriel and Grayson Murphy, those are names to, to look out for as UCLA uh, attempts to improve their defense from a season ago. One guy who might help with that is Devin Kirkwood. Now, he was a four-star recruit in the class of 2021, widely considered by recruiting agencies and uh, places like Rivals as one of the top 20 corners in the class of 2021 in the country. He's an in-state guy from, from California. And uh, the defense, if it has one big question mark, there are subsets of little groups of question marks. One of the biggest ones or one of the biggest clusters uh, of those little question marks, I'll stop saying that term now, um, <laughs> is, is the secondary because they – struggled at times a season ago, you know, even when UCLA was getting after the passer, they, they just had some problems covering guys. And, and that was something that going into the off season, UCLA fans knew had to be addressed. And I think Kirkwood is a guy who's kind of poised to make a second year leap. And the, the reports are he's had some really nice moments in, in spring camp and that he's starting to take on a little bit of a leadership role as well, which for a true sophomore, I can only imagine it is really, really difficult because you haven't played that much college football. But if you're in a group that doesn't have a, an undisputed leader and they don't have, you know, sort of a, a hallmark guy defensively that they can lean on and, and you come in with a, a decent amount of clout as a recruit. And I, I think he totally deserves that from having watched him play a little bit. That's a tough thing to be asked, but he might have to, you know, take on that sort of role. And he was asked about that uh, recently at a UCLA or after a, after a practice at, at a, a media availability session. And he said that, you know, it's it's tough, but that he's also realizing he kind of has to lean into it. Another guy he mentioned in the secondary and name to watch out for if you're a UCLA fan is the Wyoming transfer Azizi Hearn. And he's talked about how much those two ha have been working well together and how impressed, you know, uh, Kirkwood has been with him. And he started his career at Arizona, then went to Wyoming. Now he's back in the Pac-12 with UCLA. So uh, at the second level, I, I think those are the, the sorts of names to look out for to see, are they making a big leap? Are they becoming starting caliber players in the Pac-12? Because uh, at some point, UCLA is going to need those sorts of guys. And they're hoping their new defensive coordinator, who I'll get to in a, a little bit, is going to help them make strides schematically. But you, you have to have players make plays sometimes as well because a defensive coordinator can call the perfect coverage, but if it's not executed well or if guys don't know their assignments or they don't make their play, then at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. And so uh, I think Devin Kirkwood and maybe Azizi Hearn are, are players to look for at the second level of the Bruins defense. I want to talk about their defensive coordinator, Bill McGovern, because he, he's an interesting guy for Chip Kelly to have brought in as the DC as they try to revamp that side of the ball. But first, I want to tell you about Bet Online, your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online, your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device. To learn more about the trends in action, bet online where the game starts. So defensively, UCLA has a new defensive coordinator, a guy by the name of Bill McGovern. And this was a, a total, totally necessary move. If you watch UCLA's defense last year, seems like the only thing they did well was blitz seven and you know, pray that a guy didn't come open immediately on third down. I mean, that was that was essentially the their game plan there. So Bill McGovern has been in the NFL since 2013, and his ties with Chip Kelly go back to when Chip took the Philadelphia Eagles job. He was there as the, the linebackers coach, and he was there for a while, and then he bounced around with a couple other teams. And he actually hasn't been a defensive coordinator since the 2012-13 season, or since, the, since 2012, yeah, I think the 12-13 season, when he was with Boston College, right? So his last year in college was Chip Kelly's last year in college before Chip came back to coach the Bruins. And he's now in his fifth season, which is pretty crazy. I feel like that was not that long ago. But anyhow, I think the the thing for McGovern is when you've been out of college for that long, the number one question people are rightly going to have is, will he remember how to recruit? Because 
it's very different in the NFL. You don't recruit, right? You evaluate draft prospects, but you're not convincing guys to come to your school. You can make them or to your team. You can make them come to your team by drafting them. Uh, you know, there, there's free agency that's a part of it, but we all know it's very, very different. So I think that's a question mark there is, will he be able to bring in the sort of, of high level players that, that UCLA, UCLA needs to build the caliber of defense that can win them the PAC 12 South and get to the PAC 12 championship game. But schematically, I don't know if he can be uh, much worse th than Jerry. I always forget how to say his last name as a rain. Uh, no, no, see, there I go. And I got to look, now I got to look it up. Um, but it, it, he he just did a lot of things that I was not a huge fan of, um, and, and it was not uh, Azanaro, Jerry Azanaro. That's his name. Um, I apologize for, for messing that up. It's just I don't know. Always it's, it's always throwing me for a loop. I don't know why, but I think UCLA has done a good thing in in getting rid of him. I think McGovern, you know, brings a lot of experience. He he's certainly not a young guy. UCLA players like the aforementioned Devin Kirkwood. Uh, have had some good things to say about him so far. So I think that's good from a player relationship standpoint, because that's basically all recruiting is, is relating to players and convincing them to to come to your school. And Kirkwood had his, his face lit up actually, when he was asked a question a, a while ago about, um, about Bill McGovern as defensive coordinator. So that's an encouraging sign, but you know, schematically, I don't think he needs to be a wizard, you know, much like Alex Grinch at USC, he just needs to do enough. The UCLA defense just needs to be competent. And could there be an adjustment period for him as he remembers how to be a defensive play caller? Yes, there, there certainly could be. But you also have to factor in that he's been in the NFL for a while as a, a linebackers and DBs coach. And, you know, like he, he's been around for a long time and he was around a lot of defensive coordinators in the NFL. And so I think UCLA is hoping that that's going to carry over down to the college game. And speaking of NFL defensive coordinators, by the way, UCLA also added Ken Norton Jr. to their defensive staff, who played linebacker for the Bruins way, way back in the day. He was fired as the Seattle Seahawks defensive coordinator. So th that's another sort of high-level coach that, that, that they're bringing in, at least from a college standpoint, right, where you're going to the pros and bringing guys down because you feel that they're going to be able to elevate what you want to do. And look, I, I'm a Seattle Seahawks fan. I'm, I'm a Pacific Northwest kid. I didn't like Ken Norton Jr. as a defensive coordinator, but would I take him on staff as, as a position coach? Yes, I, I would. I just don't think he has chops to be a coordinator. So I, I think that McGovern has a lot of work ahead of him, and it'll be interesting to see who plays where and how much you know guys are actually uh, able to have an impact because – the UCLA defense has not been good the last several years, but um, I, I think McGovern certainly has a chance to help make UCLA better if the, if the defense can just take you know a minor step forward this year because even with the offensive turnover, I think they're going to be fine. Another question I have for UCLA going into 2022 as spring football is, is winding down is, will the offensive line be as good as it was a season ago? Because their offensive line was superb you watch them play they could you know run the ball at will i mean they ran all, all over an sec team in lsu i don't care if it was a six and six lsu team y you hear the narrative a lot about like oh it's an sec body they're bigger like a lot of it is true not all of it sometimes it goes too far but on the whole that's very true and i've seen chip kelly teams get dominated up front by by sec teams before and they ran all over LSU a season ago because that offensive line was really good. I think in pass protection, they were solid. And I think in run blocking, they were superb. They lost three starters from last year's team. That's a lot. I mean, that is a, a lot of production to, to try and replace. And I think that in the trenches, it's not as flashy, right? It's not going to get as much attention as a quarterback or a running back or a receiver. And I've talked about Zach Charbonnet and for a very good reason, he is a tremendously gifted running back for UCLA. However, if his offensive line is not any good, it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter if you put Derek Henry back there. Okay. You can't do anything as a running back. You can't be allowed to showcase your skills. If you don't have at least a good offensive line. So they're replacing three starters. That's a lot to lose in a season. They actually switched Tyler Manoa from the defensive line 
to the offensive line. He's never played offensive line before. And Chip Kelly has, you know, talked about him, thinks he's doing a nice job. And, he, you know, that having played on the other side of the ball will help him understand, you know, how to block on the offensive side and make that adjustment. It's certainly possible. But when you've never played offensive line before, that'd be asking a lot. You know, people have asked Chip Kelly before, like, is he going to be a starting tackle? And Chip has said, well, you know, we, we don't have a depth chart right now. It's, you know, a lot can change between now and, and the first game this fall. But that would be asking a lot, I think. But it, it's a name to watch because he could be there. And if he does claim the starting job, maybe he's picking it up really quickly. But that's one question I have. The last thing w- with UCLA as they look to 2022, Kyle Phillips operated most effectively out of the slot this past year. And that role is, is now going to be given primarily to Casimir Allen, who has got blazing speed good ball skills, but mostly he's really, really fast. He's a little bit smaller than Kyle Phillips, but he is an explosive playmaker. They use him in the kick return game as they should. Pretty sure he took one to the house last year, if I remember correctly. He is a guy you want to get the ball in space to, and there aren't a lot of coaches in the country who are better about doing that historically in the Pac-12 than Chip Kelly or really anyone because, it, you know, just speaking nationally, He scores a lot of points. He knows how to use these sorts of guys, right? You think of uh, the the players he's had over the years, and he's had no issue getting the ball to them in space. And so Casimir Allen, I think, was seen a little bit more uh, uh, as a gadget guy than a true well-rounded wide receiver. But can he become that? Can he become as reliable of a route runner and a pass catcher for DTR as Kyle Phillips was a season ago? Because DTR relied on Kyle Phillips a lot, right? He went to Greg Dulcich first, and he's going to Kyle Phillips second. Kaz Allen has to be able to take that leap if this offense is going to produce the way that I've talked about here on the show. I think he has the talent and capability to do that, but still, he has to go out on the field and show that he can prove it. And I think that that that's one of the the other questions is is he going to be able to replicate or even get you know a significant chunk of the production that Phillips had a season ago? He's got the speed to do it, but he he has to show off the the all around game as well. I appreciate everyone listening. Have a wonderful rest of your day.